I would first of all uh, want to thank you for the invitation and also for the, the organization of all those uh, very interesting webinars. Um, so yeah, welcome to all of you. Um, this presentation is about the use of biochar um, in waste management processes, and I will focus on anaerobic digestion and manure treatments. Um, so I want to uh, first present myself and, and the organization where I work. Um, so I work for ILVO, it's located in Belgium, um, and it's the Flanders Research Institute for Agriculture, Fisheries and Food. Um, so here you see uh, an overview of all the different topics that we are uh, investigating. Um, so it's very diverse. Um, and we also have a, a big infrastructure uh, with uh, 200 hectares of uh, fields. We have a lot of greenhouses, animal housing, um, labs, uh, but also a, a, food, a pilot food processing uh, plant. Um, and if you want to know more about this, um, you can visit our, our website or follow us on the, the social media. Um, so myself, I am a, a researcher at ILVO uh, for a couple of years. Um, and um, yeah, my main topic now is, um, is biochar and I work on, the, on a project called BOSTA. Um, this is an, an, uh, an acronym. It's... Um, it stands for biochar's added uh, value. Oh, uh, do you see my mouse? I don't think so. Uh, okay, so it stands for uh, biochar's added value in sustainable land use with targeted applications and processes, growing media and future-proof open field cultivation. So it's a, it's a, a big uh, sentence. Um, but um, as a lot of projects, it's divided in, in work packages. Um, and the first one is about biochar production um, and Hasselt University, who is um, the coordinator of this project, um, is tackling this project. So they are optimizing um, the pyrolysis uh, process and um, they are looking into pre and post treatments. Um, and then the second work package is about biochar in, uh, in manure and biomass processing. So this, will the focus, uh, this is the focus of today. Um, in the third work package, um, Ilvo is looking into biochar use in growing media. Um, so why are we doing that is because it has a lot of advantages. It can reduce the use of chemical crop protection products. It increases the disease suppression of the plants. And it also reduces nutrient losses and increases water holding capacity. And last but not least, biochar can also be used as peat replacer. Um, in the fourth work package, um, we are scaling it up and we are looking into biochar use in open field cultivation because it can have a, it can have a lot of advantages there as well. And last but not least, um, in the fifth work package, there is an integrated assessment. Uh, the Hasselt University is performing an LCA analysis um, and also a more social social techno-economic uh, evaluation. They are looking into ecosystem services and um, also all of the legal aspects of biochar use. Um, so as I already said, I will focus on the, on the second work package, but if you want to know more about the other uh, topics, um, I want to uh, uh, guide you to, to the publications. Uh, that are already uh, available. Um, so for the first work, work package, there is a, um, a publication of my colleague Amin. Um, and then um, in, the, in the next Green Carbon webinar, or maybe, yeah, I don't know, it's the next or the, it's on the 1st of December, my colleague Bart van de Castele uh, will give some, some more uh, results on the use of biochar in growing media. Um, and maybe you have seen it, but um, in April this year, um, my colleague Elisa uh, gave a presentation on the legal aspects of biochar, and you can find the YouTube link here as well. <clears throat> okay, so this brings me to the to the topic of of my presentation, and that is biochar use in, in waste management processes, um, and um, so we are not looking into uh, biochar um, used directly onto the soil. Um, 
for example, to increase carbon stocks, um, we think uh, it's better to use biochar um, different times, so a multiple use, um, especially because biochar is still quite expensive. Um, so the, the biochar can be used first in, in waste management processes such as manure treatments, anaerobic digestion and composting, because in those processes, the, the biochar can, um, can optimize the process, but can also reduce nutrient losses to the environment. Um, and then afterwards, in a second step, um, we aim to use the biochar enriched end products. So the biochar enriched manure, digested and composed um, on the field, or, or for example, also as peat replacer in growing media. Um, and then at, at last, um, the, the waste products coming from the cultivation spent growing media or the crop residues can be used again as feedstock for, for biochar production. And in that way, we have um, a multiple use of the biochar um, and we, we, uh, we have a, a closed loop. <clears throat> but as you, as you already know, biochar is a, is a diverse, um, can be very diverse depending on the, the feedstock that is used and on the, the conditions of pyrolyzing. So also the, the characteristics are very different depending on the biochar. Um, so it's very complex for an, um, a company that wants to use it in, in the biomass processing to know which bio, biochar has potential to optimize his process or to reduce losses during the process. So in a first step, um, we, um, we looked uh, to fast screening tests to, to be able to select or to engineer biochar um, with a high potential for, uh, so we focused on nitrogen with a high potential uh, for sorption of ammonium and um, NH3 um, uh, sorption. And this, uh, we already published a paper Oh, I just, uh, I pushed something. Can you still see it? Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Just let me know if something is wrong. Um, I paused the sharing apparently. So um, in this paper um, that was published this week actually, um, we um, we examined two fast screening fast screening tests to select biochars with a high potential for nitrogen sorption. Um, if you want to read uh, the publication, you can always send me an email. Um, and the major results were um, that uh, we saw that biochar made from manure actually with, had the highest potential of um, of sorbing um, ammonium nitrogen. Um, so that is biochar with a high nutrient content and a high cation exchange capacity, uh, but they should be produced at a very at a, at a lower pyrolysis temperature of approximately 450 degrees. Um, so a first take home mes message for you is already that um, you can make biochar out of manure and that manure, that bi that manure based biochar um, can be used again in manure processing to optimize um, the, the manure treatment. Okay, so based on those screening tests, um, we selected some biochars with a high potential for nitrogen sorption, and um, we used it in manure storage and in um, anaerobic digestion also in composting, but the focus of the day um, is about manure, is, is on manure storage and anaerobic digestion. So I will start um, with the, the, the effects on manure storage. Um, so we looked uh, into the effects on the, on the storage, but also on the quality of the manure. Um, and we also looked at um, what uh, the effect is uh, when we add the manure to the soil again because we don't want to um, postpone um, reduced emissions uh, to the soil application, of course. 
So our research questions and methods that we used. Um, so the first one here is um, that we studied the effect of biochar on NH3 and greenhouse gas emissions during storage of cattle manure. Um, so we had two phases of storage. In the first phase, um, we had six containers and um, um, at three of, of the containers, we uh, we added biochar uh, with a, at a dose of 10 grams per liter. And the other three there, we did not add biochar. It was also our control, so just the cattle manure. Um, you can also see the in the table the coding. So CS stands for cattle slurry. And then the first um, uh, letter is zero for no biochar and B for biochar. And then the third letter is for the second phase. There, uh, we added three extra amendments elemental sulfur um, because we expected that uh, it would reduce the pH. Um, clinoctilolite, um, that's a clay uh, mineral, a zeolite that uh, is known for his high uh, nitrogen sorption. And then uh, as a third, we added extra biochar um, and we monitored the emissions for 15 days. Um, on the second picture here, you can see how we measured the, the, gaseous, the gaseous emissions. So uh, you see a gray container and it's filled with cattle slurry. And then in the headspace, we measure the emissions with a semi-continuous multi-gas analyzer. Um, so this is uh, simulating the storage of the manure. Then the second research question is, um, if we separate this cattle slurry, with a centrifuge um, in a liquid and a solid fraction, is there then an effect of, of biochar on the quality of, the, of, the, of both of the fractions? And then in a third uh, step, um, we added the solid fractions to the soil and we measured again with the same device, um, the NH3 and greenhouse gas emissions. And we added the, fractions, the solid fractions at an equal nitrogen dose of 170 kilograms per hectare, because that's the, Maximal, uh, maximum allowed dose of nitrogen from animal manure in Flanders. Um, and we also uh, moistened the soil until a 50% water filled pore space. And at the end of this experiment, we, we measured the nitrogen, uh, the mineral nitrogen content of the soils, um, and we calculated the nitrogen mineralization uh, on the short term, so after 28 days. <clears throat> Here is a table with um, some characteristics of the biochars that were used uh, in the first and the second phase. So um, it was um, in the first phase, it was made from a woody fraction of green waste. And in the second phase, it was based um, on oak. So this brings me to the results. Um, so was there an effect of biochar on the emissions of uh, NH3 and greenhouse gases during storage? Um, when we looked to N2O, there were very low emissions. But when we looked to um, NH3, um, we saw that there was a significant decrease when we add the biochar um, to the cattle slurry compared to when we didn't add biochar. Um, so this is here the, the first uh, and second row in the table. <clears throat> and then in the second phase, when we add clinoptilolite, biochar in combination with elemental uh, sulfur and a double dose of biochar, we also saw that there was a reduction of, of approximately 20% um, compared to the, the cattle slurry without biochar. For CO2, there were no uh, significant differences. Um, however, uh, what also should be mentioned is that the methane emissions increased significant, significantly during the first uh, phase when biochar was added. Um, then the effect on the separation efficiency. So when we add uh, clean optilolite and a double dose of biochar, um, we see that there is an increased separation efficiency in the solid fraction. There was also more nitrogen in the solid fraction when we add clinoptilolite and biochar. And of course, uh, when we add biochar, you have a solid fraction with a higher carbon content. There were no significant effects on the chemical char characteristics of the liquid fraction. 
Uh, some more details uh, about the solid fraction. So when we added the biochar and all the treatments, we saw there was lower nitrate, nitrogen and uh, also on the total nitrogen, uh, calculated on the total nitrogen for the biochar treatments. And when we had biochar, um, we had a solid fraction with a higher uh, water available phosphorus and uh, magnesium content. When we add a higher dose of biochar, we have a solid fraction that is drier and uh, had a significantly higher carbon content. And also with the addition of clinoptulolites, we saw a drier um, solid fraction, but there we had a much lower carbon content and also less uh, nutrients except for iron and aluminium. And then despite what uh, we expected, when we added sulfur, we had no effect on the pH. Um, we all, we, what we saw is that we had a much higher sulfate content and a much higher cation exchange uh, capacity in the solid fraction. Um, and then the, the third research question, I think you, were, you are curious if we postpone the, the reduced NH3 emissions uh, during the storage, uh, if we postpone it uh, to the soil application of the solid fraction. Um, when we look to N2O and, and methane, um, the emissions were ne negligible. Um, when we look to NH3, um, we see that the emissions decreased during the time, uh, during our measurement of, of one month. When we look to CO2 emissions, they were, they were quite stable during the time. Um, and then here you can see the table with the different treatments and then the emissions of NH3, CO2 and the, the nitrogen mineralization. And you see here that for uh, the clinoptilolite treatment, the third one, that had the lowest NH3 emissions after soil application. And when we add clinoptilolite or a double dose of biochar, so the last uh, row, uh, we had the lowest car, uh, CO2 emissions. And uh, they are um, um, they are divided by the carbon content of the solid fraction to to be able to compare, um, and there was no significant effect on the short term term nitrogen mineralization in the soil. <clears throat> okay, um, so this brings me to the second part um, of the presentation: what is happening when you add biochar to anaerobic digestion? What is happening to the the process, but also to the, the digested, um, and what is happening when you add the digested to the soil. The research questions and the methods here. So first, um, we, um, we evaluated the effect on the yield of uh, the biogas process, uh, because that is, of course, the main, uh, the main issue. So we um, we used semi-continuous lab reactors of four and a half liter, and we had three treatments and two replicates. So on this uh, picture, you can see the, the experimental setup. It was performed at uh, OWS in Belgium. Um, so you have an, uh, an, an test reactor, um, and the, the feedstock that was uh, digested here was organic kitchen waste, and um, it was added. It was mixed with three percentage percentage of chicken manure to increase the nitrogen content and to increase the the possible nitrogen losses. And then um, we used two um, biochars. So in the first treatment, um, in two replicates, we added frost insect, insect frost biochar, um, and in the second treatments, we added a woody biochar. Then, of course, we also had a, a blank treatment without biochar. Um, and we used a dose of 5 percentage biochar on the, on the feedstock mixture. <clears throat> um, so then in a second step, um, we studied the effect of the biochar addition on the digested characteristics. So um, we um, we actually created two extra treatments. So you have the three tre treatments that I just explained, blank without biochar, frost biochar, and woody biochar. Those were added during the anaerobic digestion. Um, but then we also added the same dose of biochar um, to the control digested after anaerobic digestion. 
And then our third uh, research question um, was what is the effect of biochar on the emissions after soil application? Um, so then we used the 10, um, the five digested in two uh, replicates and they were added to the soil again at an equal nitrogen dose of 117. 70 kilograms per hectare in the first experiment and we repeated this experiment uh, with a double dose of nitrogen of 340 kilograms per hectare um, so we measured again the nh3 and greenhouse gas emissions during one month uh, after soil application <clears throat> okay and then um, the results here so first of all what, what, what was the effect of biochar on anaerobic digestion? Well, we did not see a significant effect on the biogas yield and on the composition um, of the gas, but we um, there was a trend for uh, less NH3 in the biogas when we added biochar and less ammonium in the digestate. So this indicates that the ammonium could be binded onto the biochar or there was a higher conversion into organic nitrogen during the, the digestion. Then the effect on the digested. So when we added biochar during the anaerobic digestion process, um, we, we get a, a higher carbon content and CN ratio in the digested. But when we added the biochar after the digestion um, to the digested, um, we did not see that result. Um, when we added both biochars after anaerobic digestion, we get a decrease in the ammonium content and the ammonium uh, on total nitrogen ratio. And there was also uh, an effect of type of biochar. We saw that when you add insect frost biochar during or after uh, anaerobic digestion, that you get it digested with a higher phosphorus and potassium content. <clears throat> and then um, we added all those different digested to the soil. Um, when we added them at a dose of 170 kilograms per hectare, we actually saw no difference between treatments with or without biochar. So there were no extra nitrogen losses uh, with the biochar treatments. Therefore, of course, we repeated the experiment uh, with a double nitrogen dose. Um, and then we saw um, that there were lower N2O emissions for the frost biochar um, during or afterwards, um, and that there were for both biochars lower CO2 emissions compared to the control. So here on the graph, you can see um, the CO2 emissions um, for the different treatments. Uh, so the first two were the control without biochar, and then all the others were the different treatments with biochar addition during or after and we saw no effects on NH3 emissions. <clears throat> so this brings me um, to the end of the presentation. And um, yeah, I just want to stress that it is still work in progress. So the uh, experiments were just finished and we are now uh, still processing all the data. So if you have suggestions or, uh, or thoughts about it, uh, please uh, share them with me. Um, so to conclude, um, we, we see that biochar has a potential as amendment during waste management processes. It reduces the NH3 em emissions during manure storage and during anaerobic digestion. And the nitrogen losses were not postponed to soil application of the end product. So we see no risk for pollution swapping. And when we um, add the end products with biochar to the soil, we actually see a decrease in CO2 emissions. Um, and those biochar enriched end, product, end products have a higher carbon content. So um, they have a high potential to in, uh, for increasing the soil carbon stocks. Um, they can also be used as slow release fertilizer, um, as speed replacer uh, uh, in growing media, um, and of course, again, as feedstock for biochar production. Um, so I think I'm just in time, um, Christian. Um, I want to thank you um, for, for listening and joining me. Um, I am here on the last slide. You can see the, the website of the BASTA project and our Twitter account, uh, and also a YouTube video. I think it's in Dutch. Um, uh, 
um, on the on the project. Um, and here on the picture you see our our um, personalized pasta cupcakes that we uh, made for um, an event in Belgium. But as it is an uh, online uh, webinar here, I can't uh, I can't give them you, to you to uh, to taste them. But they were very uh, very tasty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Irene. I uh, really want to try these cupcakes now. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're welcome in Belgium. <laughs> um, we have a couple of questions for you, but uh, I, I just want to quickly ask a first question. Um, so, what, what, how, is there any possibility that you recover the or isolate the biochar after your AD treatment and analyze the biochar itself? So you mean that um, that after the the biomass uh, processing that we uh, try to isolate the biochar uh, by sieving or something and then can reuse the the nutrients enriched bio biochar? Yeah, um, basically, I, I I was wondering if you can analyze the biochar how it changed during the AD treatment. So. Yeah, we we actually did that kind of experience using litter bags, like very small bags with with small holes. There we put the biochar in, and then we added it to composting process. Um, um, so it could interact with the with the process, um, and we could actually see that 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 also the process has an impact um, on the biochar characteristics. For example, for composting, um, the pH of the biochar um, reduced probably by by microbial activity. Um, but it uh, we we only did it for composting. But I think it's it's uh, indeed interesting to uh, to study that as well. Um, and I think um, Sudarkar has his hand up, so um, please ask your question. Or not. Okay, if that's not working, so you also got a question from Sh Shashek. I think, uh, did you test dairy manure as well? And how was the, how, how was the manure, what was the, state of the manure when you used it fresh or post volatilized okay so it was um, it was cattle manure uh, from 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 uh, from dairy and it was just fresh manure that we um, that we took uh, freshly and and, uh, and put into the container so to really uh, simulate a, a storage uh, process and for the for the AD process, was that uh, uh, was the manure used in the AD or no? It was only organic kitchen waste and and chicken. Uh, yeah, small amount of chicken manure. Um, so, um, Sudaka, you still have your hand up, so you can still ask your question if you want. Um, in the meantime, the last question you got from John was please address potential thermal inefficiency of synthesizing biochar from high moisture content feedstock. Oh, can you repeat this? Um, uh, he's asking about the, your thoughts about the potential thermal inefficiency of synthesizing wet biochar or biochar with a high moisture content. Is Not, it in the chat? I, I will. Yeah, I have to yeah, read it. The, the last one. The last one. In, ah, yeah, okay. Um, I should ask this to the to the colleagues who produced. Uh, actually, the the biochar I did not do this myself, um, um, so I, I cannot answer it. But if you want, I can I can forward it to my colleague. Um, okay, maybe Sudaka is now ready. Ask the question, please. Yes, yes, yes. Sudaka ready from India. <laughs> So uh, should I confine my query only to this particular subject or I can ask in general any biochar query? Only confining to your subject of... Uh, I mean, I, I, ideally, it, ideally, it would be about the... Um, On the same paper. About, the, about this presentation, yeah. Okay. Uh, coming to the point, you see, uh, the anaerobic digestion, when you add this uh, uh, biochar, as it is co-composting of biochar, 
is supposed to be producing better nutrients than uh, when uh, you get, get to see the compost alone. So in a similar way, that is in the wet state, uh, in the aerobic state. When it is uh, an aerobic state, when you use this biochar with this compost, whatever may be the composition like uh, chicken manure addition, that must have added little Philip to the uh, you know cause of uh, you know improvement. But uh, do you suggest uh, uh, and, uh, co inoculation? Sorry, co composting in an anaerobic state would have improved uh, the real benefits as uh, you know, asked by some gentleman. Is that possible? Because the the tests have proven that co composition of uh, compost and biochar would be giving better nutrients you see at the end of the composition than the composition alone without biochar in a similar way in that that is an aerobic state but here in the an anaerobic state the co composition i mean compost uh, digest state would have helped uh, the nutrients increase or whatever I don't know if my, my query is uh, understood by you. If so, if I'm, if I understand it correct, you you mean that when you compost um, with biochar, that you have uh, uh, a good effect of the biochar on the on the on the yes, nutrients. Obviously yes, obviously, co-composting would help. Uh, you know, Indeed. retaining more nutrients. Yeah, Maybe and perhaps uh, the emissions wouldn't have been there. Uh, that might be the reason I, I'm just uh, yeah. info, inferring. So, yeah, but here, here, uh, that feasibility here, they, there is no question of emission when it is in the container. Maybe what is the phenomenon? Uh, uh, unlike in you uh, know uh, open state composition, co-composition, co-composting uh, uh, of uh, biochar and uh, compost. Here. Uh, combination of uh, compost uh, in an anaerobic state, what would be the effect? So you mean if there is an effect of biochar as well in the anaerobic digestion? Yes, yes. So yes. what possibility would have been there? Here there are no emissions here. You That is under well, the you, control you condition you are doing anaerobic uh, So digestion. you produce during anaerobic digestion, you you yes. also produce biogas, so it's indeed it's not emissions; it, it's captured. But the the composition of the biogas is is, uh, is is depending on the on the process, and you want you want to maximize the the biogas yield, and you want to minimize the the other gases. So um, you want to minimize, for example, NH three emission because they are. Um, they are not good for your anaerobic digestion process and your your uh, your organisms, um, but they also see an, an increased effect on on biogas yield in some publications. So an increased methane emissions as well. So it's it's very different of the of the interaction with the microorganisms in composting because that's aerobic. Uh, you have you have different microorganisms and and different aspect aspects and effects there. Uh, I see a comment that there was a publication on that. Yeah, much higher methane production when biochar was included. Yes, I, I also read that that sometimes, but we didn't see it in, in our study. Uh, with uh, but it was not with manure. It was mo the mo most uh, of it was was green waste, uh, kitchen waste. Great. So uh, thank you for 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 answering uh, the a bit tricky <laughs> question. I think. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Yaginda. We are we are well in time i think still so okay. thank you very much for your presentation and if yeah. you have any questions you will first of all find the presentation online in a couple of days and second of all the contact um, details are on the presentation so thank you very much Yarinda.